Hello there. This is Michael Merdad. Thanks for joining us. This is our Friday Night Spiritual Insights program. We do this every Friday at about 5.30 Arizona time. Today, what I'd like to do is address a topic really, really that people should know. They should have a high school course on this because it's kind of like sending people into the world very consciously. So today we're going to talk about dealing with post-trauma. Now, some of you go, well, I don't have that, or I don't want to think about that, or I don't want to de deal with it or whatever. Um, please, please listen in on this. Whether it's for your sake or loved one's sake, everybody has a form of trauma, therefore post-trauma. Post-trauma means not just life after a trauma, it's life with the effects of said trauma. So what if I don't have any major traumas? I didn't say major or minor, I said trauma. So are there effects? There are. All trauma has effects until healed to completion. Completion becomes kind of subjective, but healed to completion means healed to the point where it, there's two levels of completion, but one of them is healed to the point where you're at peace, that if stuff comes up again someday, you're, you'll deal with it. If not, you're okay with it. And completion also implies that, ultimately implies that I'm, I'm switching over from an old wounded self to a new self. And that is best done with God versus uh, what some people think is therapy, just therapeutically done. You know, uh, it goes to another level of completion when spirit is involved with our healing process. Now, dealing with post-trauma, the definition of trauma, for me, my definition of trauma that I made up once upon a time, it's anything that lacks love's presence. Anything that lacks a feeling of peace and love is traumatic because we are the embodiment of peace and love. And when we're experiencing something that isn't peaceful and loving, it's sort of traumatic because we're not experiencing our true selves. It's as though a thief came and stole our real self, which is traumatic. A robber robbed us of our true self, which is traumatic. Somebody, you know, just slammed us with an experience that wasn't like peace and love. That's trauma. And whether it was somebody just teasing you verbally, taunting you, it's traumatic because it doesn't feel like peace and love. That's why the ultimate remedy for peace and love is to bring peace and love where it seems to be lacking, including into the hearts and souls of the people around us or in the world for that matter. Where there's peace is needed, I'll bring peace. Where love is needed, I'll bring love. Where forgiveness is needed, so be it. You know, we could summarize the like three essential steps for dealing with post-trauma, but then I'll elaborate and bring that to five. Three essential steps. Recognize when you've experienced the opposite. It, it, even, not just the opposite, like meaning the original trauma, but when you're starting to feel the effects of it or relive. Feel would mean something in the past is sort of like a ghost haunting me. But sometimes I, I relive it where it becomes like a, a, I'm triggered into psychologically going back in time to that experience. Sometimes even physically, viscerally, or even in a pattern of recreating that same kind of event in my life. So it's like, I got to recognize when I'm experiencing the opposite. Whether it's current time or a past flashback of some kind, recognize. If you want to deal with post-trauma, first recognize when it's happening, that you are feeling the effects of post-trauma. Secondly, just learn to say to yourself, it's not happening right now. Now, something traumatic might be happening and re-triggering. Try to go and get safe and then say, right now. Find a new now, a new present moment that you can Soak in. Okay, there we go. I mean, I can run out of a lightning storm and I'm triggered lightning and thunder. Something happened. The big booms of the thunder are scaring me. Past life bombs were going up and I'm being re-triggered or scared because right now it's rattling the house. 
I run inside, I dry off. Do I stay all tense and scared? Isn't it okay, guys, to light the fire? And oh, wow, sure feels nice to be out of that. Hot tub would be really nice, hot bath. But the second step is soak it in that you are experiencing something new and beautiful. Third, give thanks. If all you do is recognize you're being challenged with a trauma, how's that helping? If all you do is recognize it and then, for example, kind of soak in, own that now you got out of the danger, you're feeling better, soak that in. Don't just go, this feels better. Soak it in, like reprogram. And then I say, don't just end there, give thanks, because giving thanks completes it. Locks it up, zips it closed, done, so that you can move to a new level of consciousness. This is easier than said than done. It's easier said than done because trauma really pulls us out of our center. You know, like we could talk, I could do a lecture for 10 hours straight on post-trauma and healing and trauma of various types and he healing of various types. And, and then something somebody could say or think or do that just twists the stomach. And it happens before you can catch yourself and go, wait a minute, breathe, and, you know, center and all that. These things catch us off guard often. But when there's no trauma from the past that's unhealed, left unhealed, when there's none that are left unhealed, there won't be triggers for something today to sort of get under my skin, as it were. Now, if I were to elaborate those three steps to five, they would be as follows. Please uh, write them down, print them out, memorize them, do something for yourself and others. Because there are lots and lots of books out there that are, you know, how to deal with post-trauma. And they're very cerebral often. They're very technical often um, and complicated often. And that's not helpful. Especially when dealing with post-trauma, what we need is simple. Because often post-trauma is like being dragged back into childhood. Well, why do I want to give a child, the inner child that's been traumatizing me, some manual, some 500-page manual with techniques and exercises for dealing with post-trauma? Not saying that those don't have a place for some individuals, but first, the first response should be simple response. Five things, guys. So I would say you still have to recognize that you're experiencing some sort of post-trauma. If you don't see that, you're not going to do anything right just to fix it. So recognize this, oh, this is happening. Yesterday, this happened. You know, today, this is happening. Recognize, see that post-trauma has hit you or is having an effect on you. Secondly, do whatever form of therapy feels right for you. I don't care if it's yoga, body work, counseling, EFT, EMDR, whatever, breath work, do something. Recognize it's happening and bring yourself to a place of, you know, post-trauma out. Punch a bag or pillow if that's what is energetically needed. Uh, cry, do something that therapeutically helps you move through the post-trauma. Do not deny it's happening. That's not going to help you. Do not minimize it's happening. It's not going to help you. Don't just get angry that somebody hurt you and caused trauma slash post-trauma. Not going to help. You have to become, you know, open. Don't become immobilized. Become open, uh, you know flexible, I can uh, a little yoga, a little breath work, things that kind of bring you out when you're otherwise, you know, locked up. Trauma, anything that lacks love's presence. So don't try to play the game of I don't have any major ones, so I'll ignore it. You, you do have experiences that maybe you don't realize did hurt, or if they hurt, maybe they hurt slightly, but burying them, they're still having an effect. They still have to be healed. The universe 
will exist as a limited world or universe till the day all these pieces are healed. So the world can change through us and only through us. The third thing I would do is once you do the therapy, the breath work, the warm bath, back to what I said in the first list, soak it in. Not just, okay, I'm sitting in a hot tub, nice warm tub, this is great, post-trauma is happening, but I'm sitting in a tub. Those are just you know, it's things. There's no change, there's no shift. Decompress, you're getting a massage, let the joints open up. Ah, a little breath work, a little words and sounds. Ah, let that happen. Really soak it in. Let it work for your benefit. Instead of, you know, I'm tense, I'm getting a massage. This is supposed to help. It's not going to help unless you let it in. Let the change in. Why don't we let it in? Sometimes because it's a way of our ego throwing a tantrum. I refuse to relax because that way I'm going to keep everybody punished whoever hurt me. Sub subconsciously, that's what we're doing. Sometimes we're too scared. I don't want to relax because somebody might hurt me again any minute. It's a very sad state. Let it in. Let something in, man. And if, if you're not going to, then why do it? You're just wasting your time. Try it. Try and let, let love in. And if you can push the envelope a little more, the fourth step would be don't just soak in the massage, the yoga, whatever, but and then the new experience to reprogram the old one, but call in God's presence. Not only the massage, not only the warm bath, but peace and love, peace and love. Breathe it in with every breath for a few minutes. Don't just breathe it in and hear the words. Try to imagine feeling peace, happiness, whatever word that is a divine feeling that you'd like to use. Just soak it in. But don't just soak in good experience like a warm bath. Soak in the divine presence. Takes it to a whole new level. And again, end with giving thanks. So if I were to put this to five steps, it would be recognize the situation, do what I can to therapy it, as it were, soak in whatever I've done that's you know feeling good, that's not feeling like trauma, add the spiritual God component, and then give thanks. Now, why doesn't therapy have more of a long lasting effect with post trauma? One reason, they leave that step out about God and giving thanks. They leave out, you know, they might say, recognize you're going through trauma and then do some therapeutic things to fix it, to heal it, whatever. That's as far as they get. They, they often forget to tell you how the importance of soaking in the new experience adding God to it, and giving thanks. Um, too often therapy is designed not to include God or lofty things. You know, you just don't hear that, give thanks, in the average academic version of therapy. And, uh, and that's one reason why I, I even went to a topic like this. Um, guys, I, I've been doing healing work for lifetimes. But in this lifetime alone, 40 years of spiritual work, counseling, and so on. It's a long time. And, and I'm not bragging. I'm going to explain something. Where the average therapist might have a couple dozen clients per year that they you know, cycle through, maybe a few, four dozen, that they cycle through their office here and there, summer repeats and new ones here and there. Even if there's whatever number, 50, 70, whatever. Um, every year. My, my clientele is in the hundreds and sometimes thousands per year times 40 years. Um, I've seen my fair share, heard my fair share, experienced my fair share of diversity of wounds as well as teaching, healing, body working, and doing all these things to make a difference for people who have been hurt. That's why my definition of trauma is anything that's lacking the presence of love or peace. That's, that's an accurate definition. It's not a, an academic one, but it covers the academic ones. Those who could say it's when you were uh, forced to do something, you well, that's still not peaceful and loving, is it? 
it's important that we learn to recognize that it's lacking peace and love because otherwise people too often get their heads involved where they go, well, on a zero to 10 scale, it has to be a five or more to be called traumatic. See, and then what you're gonna be tempted to do, oh, I'm, I'm down here, a three, so my trauma doesn't count. No, no, that's bull. It's bogus and it's a misteaching of most therapies in this world. Anything that lacks love's presence, you know, um, I can think back adulthood, but also as a child where something just was implied at me and it was terrifying. Nothing was done. Just the implication was traumatic because trauma is when we lack love's presence. And once I use that definition, oh my God, it's like now there's no, there's no little bits that are, are going to be minimized and left out of my right to heal completely. At first, you might say, geez, I don't like his definition because now I thought I only had one or two traumas. Now I've got 2,000. At first, it's going to sound overwhelming, but the child in you deserves it to be told, and the adult, uh, to be told, you know what, anything that hurt you is worthy of being addressed. Even if the hurt was verbal or emotional or psychological or implied situations, um, they're still scary to a child all the same. So please take proper measures to deal with post-trauma. Please learn to recognize the first step of all, to recognize that you're even experiencing post-trauma. One way you know, because there's different variations uh, of post-trauma, uh, again, we know it's the lack of love's presence, but to know when it's getting you right now, uh, one way to know is if you're having an age regression moment where you're, you're crying, but your sounds of your tears or your whimpers and whatever are sounding like a two-year-old, a four-year-old. You can tell. Uh, when you went into a rage that doesn't match the situation, those, those you know, one si sign or symptom is your age regressing and feeling very small or childlike. Another is when you see the emotional reaction is not suitable to the situation. You know, somebody, uh, you say, uh, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a book. Somebody goes, yeah, right. And you're like, hey, you know what, jerk? You know, that was really rude. And you go after them. And all they said was, yeah, right. Why the big reaction? Well, because people have taught me, treated me like I couldn't do anything right or I couldn't do anything successfully and so on. See, my reaction tells me, oops, there was a bit of tr post-trauma speaking. My reactions are not just angry ones. There's also fears that are not making sense to the moment. You started just, I can't, 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 can't. You start shutting down. When you start flight, fright, freeze, those responses can tell you, I must be experiencing post-trauma. Sure, right now I might be experiencing a trauma, let's say, um, a car accident happens right now. Boom, that's trauma in the moment. But it isn't just in the moment. Every time I felt out of control, like I do when I'm in a car accident, is going to be coming up along with it. So I'm still going to be pulled to the past, even if current incidents are, are indeed happening. Sometimes they're not happening. You're just reliving them emotionally or psychologically, they're not even happening. Somebody said, yeah, right, they were joking with you, and you flipped out at them. It wasn't that they were doing, you just interpreted it that way, because you're seeing through the past. Unhealed, the unhealed mind that are wearing lenses of post-trauma. So what you're seeing, unfortunately, is, you know, not true, not accurate, not in the moment. But hold yourself in compassion, nevertheless, because wounds are there, hurts are there, and a person that deserves some care is there. So do what you can, please. Consider those steps, taking yourself through those steps. Post-trauma. I'm not asking you to become obsessed on, on post-trauma, but I am asking you to be aware of it. Not just your own, 
when you can tell other people are going into post-trauma, an employee that tends to flip every time they get caught doing something wrong, just to be able to sit back with them one day and say, you know, so how's work and bring up a casual conversation and do some bridging to bring up, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to mistakes, how do they feel? Are you okay, you know, still? Are you learning? Are you, you know, when you make mistakes here at the job, are you doing okay with it? Talk about yourself a little. God, I still can't believe I still make mistakes at this job. Uh, keeping it light. And then that way they can talk about it. And you might say to them, you know what? Um, if ever you're making mistakes, and it's scaring you or upsetting you as much as you, you're telling me it is, why don't we come up with a plan? This could be your kids, employees or whatever, but to be able to say, let's come up with a plan. Let's do like, uh, oops, a little mantra, oops, so that I, your boss or coworker, know that you just did something and I can be reminded to say to you, Everything is fine. Everything's going to be okay. And we can reprogram that visceral reaction you were having. So things like that, guys. Um, you can go and watch other videos of mine. I've done a whole DVD set on healing, and it involves like regret and shames and, you know, other uh, issues, traumas. So there's a good DVD that covers this four hours worth, probably, uh, compared to a, a mini talk like I'm doing right now. All right. But I'm glad that I had a chance to address this because, you know, still I have clients all the time, every week, every day, you know, all the time, the clients, and I can still hear in their voice, feel in their soul, how much something's still hitting them, affecting them from a place of post-trauma. And uh, God, we deserve to be at peace, guys. We do. We deserve to be okay. We deserve to not live in fear, shame, guilt, regrets, and so on. So let's give ourselves a break in that sense. All righty. Thanks for listening. God bless you for that. If you feel called, watch us in other programs. My website, as I said here and there, um, offers DVD sets, books, free articles. Um, but you can watch hundreds of different talks on, uh, not the same ones that are on the DVD sets necessarily, but hundreds are available for free on, in my YouTube playlist. Playlists on miracles or on healing or on uh, general spirituality. So it, there's lots of different playlists, relationships. It's all there for you and so much of it for free. Just get into it, absorb what you can from it, learn. And you could just that alone. You don't want to fall on that that convenient statement that you'd like to grow or heal more but you can't afford it's there guys you'll learn as much in these free talks as you would in years of therapy in many instances that doesn't mean it's better than therapy there's a place for that too to have a a, a friend sitting with you you know each session uh befriending you sometimes surrogate mother father figures your your healers your therapists there's a place for it so it all has its place. So if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. If ever you want a private session, you can go on our website or email us uh, through the website and ask, and we schedule those phone sessions, okay? So many blessings to you. And if you feel called to make a donation, thank you. God bless for that. Uh, it's, how, it's how we work the ministry and do the work I do. All right? You can do that online, clicking the buttons that are usually showing here. Um, or whatever else you go to our just email us or or mail to us directly at the address in our website all right so thank you for watching whether you're seeing this on youtube or facebook or my website or wherever you happen to be seeing this talk thanks for joining us one way or the other i truly believe we're all good people in our soul and uh we all need to access that more and not shaming the human self but lots of love loving the hell out of the human self that's been so wounded, love the hell out of it, meaning all the wounds out of it and bring love to it. You deserve it. Thanks, guys. Peace be with all of you. Bye-bye.